Hi, I'm Sebin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Generalized Feedback Rock Diagram. There is a reference here. It's a paper of mine about uh, 35 years ago about a unified approach to teaching feedback in electronic circuit courses. And indeed, I've been using this uh, approach in my classes for many years. And I guess generations of engineers are now applying it in their daily electronic design. So what is the problem with the classical feedback block diagram, which is shown here, which is very well known, of course. Well, what we have here is the summing junction. The signal is coming into the summing junction. There is an A open loop, is the feedback path, beta, and this fits one-to-one -to, -one to the non-inverting amplifier. Here we have the input into the summing junction, which is the input stage of the operation amplifier, the differential stage. This is the summing junction. And then we have the gain of the amplifier, operation amplifier, and the feedback that goes into the negative input. This is why we have this negative sign here, okay? So this fits one to one, and as we know, the closed loop transfer function is the A open loop over one plus beta A open loop. This is for this block diagram. We can figure out this value here very easily. And then when the loop gain beta a is much larger than one the one drops a open loop cancels out and we are left with one over beta which is the beauty of negative feedback that the closed loop gain is a function of beta which could be a passive network while here the open loop could be an amplifier which has drifts changing gains etc so this is very well known and as i've said this fits very well with this non-inverting amplifier. However, what happens with the inverting amplifier? And here, the input is not into the summing junction. It's not into here, okay? So what are we going to do? Well, people have been trying to solve this in various ways uh, by breaking it into two parts, uh, modifying the block diagram by adding some terms to it. And then, as I've said, like 35 years ago, it dawned on me, that all that you need is to add this block here, which I call the G block, okay? So that now the input is not going directly into the junction, but rather through this G block. Now it looks very simple, but it makes all the difference in the world. And then you can solve not only the non-inverting amplifier, but you can solve many other systems in which like the G could be an amplifier, could be a combination of a voltage feedback amplifier and a current feedback amplifier. So there's many things you can do. And most of the system are not of this type that you input the signal directly into the summing junction, but most of systems do have this G block. Now the definition of the G is a transfer function between the input and the error signal when the output is zero, okay? Output is zero then the transfer function from here to here is the G block. And beta is, as usual, the transfer function to the summing junction from the output when S in is zero, okay? So these are the definition of G and beta. And then the transfer function in the closed loop will be the same thing as before, except that it is multiplied by G. Again, it looks simple, but as you'll see, it makes all the difference in the world, okay? So now, in this case, when beta A is larger than 1, okay, then 1 drops, and we cancel out A open loop, and we get G over beta, and not 1 over beta. And when the loop gain is smaller than 1, this drops, and we get G A open loop. That is, we, we get this path here from G A open loop. There's no feedback when beta A is smaller than 1. So this is the idea of the generalized feedback system. So let's have a look now at the inverting amplifier. First thing to do is to find out what is G and beta in this case. Well, G is from the input to the summing junction. When the output is zero, then this is the transfer function from here to here. So this is this divider here. And beta is from the output to the same point when the input is now zero. And this will be this transfer function, this divider here, Rn over Rn plus Rf, okay? And we know 
that when beta a over loop is larger than one, then the gain should be g over beta, that is this over this. So when we do this, here is g and here is beta, we get indeed rf over rn, as we should. Now there is a fine point here with the sign, which I like to explain, it, it could be a point of confusion here, okay? So first of all, let me state that we are talking about a negative feedback. So there is a minus here. Now this minus could be coming from the amplifier itself, like here. This amplifier in the forward path has a negative sign, okay? In the non-inverting amplifier, it is a positive sign, okay? So here it is negative. So here we have a negative sign. This is why we have a negative here. Now, this plus here has already taken into account that it is a negative feedback. Doesn't matter whether, whether it is because of a open loop or because of the beta, as we have seen, is getting into the minus terminal. So in this case, in this particular case, we don't have to do anything with beta or a open loop because it is the same, because it just takes into account the total sign, but here we have only the forward path, so we have to be careful about the sign. So in this particular case, there is a negative sign here. So when we divide this A open loop for beta A is larger than 1, we are left with this sign, okay? And therefore, the answer is RF over RN with a minus sign to it. So this is the whole story. And you can apply it, of course, to any system. The only thing you have to do is to find out what is G or beta in your particular case, and you are all set. And especially for beta A larger than 1, you get immediately the expression. Of course, this could be general impedances, could be active or passive component, etc. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.